trichotomy would make it equivalent to what, uh, what you just suggested. Okay, very good. So we've just uh, defined what we mean by uh, order on Q. Okay, so stepping back from uh, what may appear to be a, a little bit tedious, but we're being careful here because we're building the foundations. We no longer have this picture, do we? Now there's a way to, uh, to think about the rationals the same way we think about the integers. We think about the integers as ordered, living on some kind of line, perhaps, where this is to the left of this if this is less than this. Right? So the rationals actually live on such a line as well. So let's think a little bit about what, uh, what that looks like. So a new picture of Q. We can think about it as you know, here are the integers. Let's use some different colors here for fun. Right? 0, 1, 2, minus 1, minus 2. We have this notion of order. And uh, there are some rationals here. And they, you can check that, for instance, 1 half is less than 1. So it belongs here. And it's bigger than 0. 1 quarter is between these two in the order, et cetera, right? Five-fourths minus one over two, et cetera, minus four-thirds, OK? And there are a lot, more, a lot of more points here as well. Yes, don't make me write them all down. But there are a lot of them, and we'll answer the question of exactly how many there are in a few lectures. OK? <laughs> OK, so we have a new picture. And guess what? This picture is good enough to answer some questions. Right? So Q, in some sense, is good enough to solve some, uh, some, some questions we might be wondering about. So for instance, if I have three cakes and I want to divide them among five people, I might be interested in equal shares for everybody. And so three cakes have to satisfy five people equally. Then I'm interested in the answer in solving this equation, right? Is there an integer that solves this equation? No. Is there a fraction? Yeah. In fact, it's clear what that fraction is because of the, the, the rule I just erased, right? The multiplication rule, cross multiplication, we'll s we can see that x equals 3 over 5 satisfies this equation, solves this. Why? This is 5. It's the same as 5 over 1 times 3 over 5. And these multiply, and you get 15 over 5, which is equivalent to 3 over 1, which is 3. Right? This, is, this is just the arithmetic you learned in grade school. Okay? But it's on firm foundations now. Now, from here on out, what I want you to do, unless you're asked a, a problem that is actually foundational, you can just assume that we know the properties of the rationals. I'm not going to ask you to go back to working with ordered pairs. Just work with fractions as you're used to. Okay. So we have the rationals. And they're good enough to answer some things. But they're not good enough to, uh, to solve all equations of this form. Here is uh, another example. Um, what about x squared equals 2? claim it's not good enough to answer this question. And uh, let's, in fact, see why. Um, I will do that above. 
So, so some of you have seen this uh, proof before, perhaps in discrete mathematics, but I want to uh, do it for the benefit of everyone who has not seen it. Uh, and you have a homework that's, that's very similar, but in some ways different. So this may elucidate some points you, you hadn't thought about before. So here is a, this is a, 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 a fact that we will prove as a theorem. There is no solution x squared equals 2 has no solution in Q. Another way of saying it is, this is a way you've often heard it said, is square root of 2 is not rational. Okay, and I'm avoiding saying that here because we haven't defined the square root of 2. Okay? All I'm saying is, in the rationals, there's no solution. So, uh, here's a proof. Uh, it's a classic proof uh, by contradiction. And uh, if you're going to do a proof by contradiction, it is customary in mathematical writing to tell the reader you're about to do a proof by contradiction, by, by writing proof and then parentheses by contradiction. Now, you'll notice I've put a period here. Uh, this is not a complete sentence, but this is convention. This is just customary mathematical writing. Okay, so it's okay to do this. Okay. Proof by contradiction. Okay, so what is a proof by contradiction? Well, the way a proof by contradiction normally goes, you start off by assuming that the thing you're trying to prove is false and show that leads to a problem. And if it's if it leads to a problem, then the thing you started with, which is the opposite of what you're trying to prove, couldn't have been uh, false, so it had to be true. Okay, that's sort of the basic plan. So uh, let's just illustrate with this example. X squared equals 2 has no solution. What is the, uh, uh, w if, if this is not true, then what statement would I be starting with? Good. Assume that there is a solution in Q has a solution in Q. Okay. This is the way to start. Uh, and now I will change this statement into some uh, to a, a more formal statement, i.e., let's say x equals P over Q. Are you with me? What else should I remind the reader of about P and Q if I'm talking about fractions? Good. Where P and Q are in Z. Okay? The shorthand equals and the shorthand uh, contained in, these are, these are generally acceptable for mathematical writing, even writing on a piece of paper. Okay? Okay, very good. Now, uh, I claim there's one more thing I might want to assume here, but it's not going to be obvious to us off the bat that I'm going to need this, okay? So what I want you to uh, do is leave a little space and assume um, that something else is true. Something else is true, okay? But just to motivate how you might begin this problem yourself, you might not be able to see what, uh, what's coming. Okay. So if you're solving this problem yourself, you'll start by contradiction because now you actually have something concrete